seated. A lot of strange faces, a lot of different faces. They've got older, you can't recognize them. Well, my name is Lee, and I attend this church frequently. And uh, we just like to welcome you people here, or the church does, and certainly the Cowley family. Thank you, and so pleased that you've came and supported them. And uh, just to remember our dear sister. To that end, people ask me sometimes, a long time ago, why do you call them sister and brother? for people that may not understand or may not know or wonder why. You're all in families and you've likely had siblings, brothers and sisters. Well, all we call our sister here, sister, is because it's in the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just another family, but we're brother and sister. That's why they say brotherly, brother Howard and sister June or whatever it might be. So that's the why of that. Uh, just by the by, I've known Shirley for I do an account of years and wow, 55 to 60 years I've known Sister Shirley. And all that time, she's loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Right from the start to the finish, well there isn't any finish, she's actually just passing through. And all Christians, that accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to see her again, and I'm one of them. Amen. All we've got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and acknowledge him while we're on this side of the crossover. But you are all welcome, not only just to the service here, but to all the other services. Every Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, you're very welcome. If you like to coming in, you're welcome. Come and join us. The Cowley family welcomes you at this time very much. Okay, shall we um, open with a hymn here? What a friend we have in Jesus, and we'll stand to sing.
some really good advice in that hymn. You may be seated. At this time, we've got a tribute going to bring to us by Christopher Goosens, wherever he is. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Any speaking will be done from that uh, microphone there, just out of interest. Uh, greetings to you. I am Christopher Goosens. I am the middle son of my mom, Vanessa. I now live with my wife, Emma, in Tauranga, New Zealand. I'd like to share a tribute on behalf of my mom, dad, and family in Canada. Vanessa writes, I really appreciate and treasure mom and dad naming me Vanessa Shirley. My uh, mom first traveled over to Canada when my eldest Joshua was born. She returned on the occasions when my two other sons were born, Chris and Daniel. During her many visits, mom really got to know each of her grandsons. She taught them to knit scarves and hats. She was patient with them. Mom was amazed and loved the sheer volume of water at Niagara Falls and the Canada dinner shows. Mom made several more trips to Canada, some with Dad. She loved as she made some precious connections with the brethren in my local church as she attended fellowship events and prayer meetings. Mom would often sing with Auntie Merle at church. She would play the ukulele. She had a unique way of playing it. Mom loved to go to church. She loved the brethren. She loved seeing the variety of nationalities praising God together. Mom and Dad enjoyed visiting the Lion Safari, drive through the park, and marine land. I always remember Mom enjoying visiting uh, the neighbor's pet bear named Caesar each time she came, which was about 800 to about 1,000 pounds. I am so grateful for the time spent with Mom. Often was sitting and talking and watching her grandboys grow up. Mom loved to see the light at night, play in the street trees. She liked to do word searches with a cup of tea. We have many treasured memories of you visiting Canada. The last time Mom and Dad visited Canada was in 2015 when they attended Josh and Sarah's wedding. This was such a special, this was a special family time. Unfortunately, due to our family plans changing in March last year relating to COVID, Mom was, wasn't, uh, Mom hasn't got to meet Lily, my first grandchild, Mom's great granddaughter. However, they had made a connection via WhatsApp videos and photos. Today is Lily's fourth birthday, 2705-2021. Uh, we will treasure this connection made by sharing this special day. Mom, Nana, Great Nana, you will live on in our hearts. You are such a blessing to us. May you rest in peace. Go into your rewards until we meet again. Much love, Vanessa, Brian, and family. And this is uh, something that I wrote up here. Nana Shirley was a person who dedicated her life to the Lord. And she had a lot of love for people. She loved her family equally and would try to make you feel that you were included. Nana did not like complaining. Even when she was older, she was thankful for her mobility, even when she had to use her walker. Shirley would give you good wisdom and advice when needed. 
I'm so thankful to have a Nana like Shirley. She was such a role model and an inspiration to me. Nana Shirley is not sad now. She has gone up to, into glory and has reached her reward. If Shirley came back to earth now, she would say, I am with our Lord Jesus Christ. Nana Shirley found great comfort from the footprints poem that hung above her bed. It reads like this. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes of his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to him and one and the other to the Lord. Then the last scene of his life flashed before him. He looked back and the footprints at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at a very lowest and saddest time in his life. This really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you. I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Thank you, Brother Chris. That's true. Our sister was always open about people knowing about her Lord, our Lord. There's a saying that goes around, absent in the body, present with the Lord. That's why we're quite happy. She's in a better place and she wouldn't want to come back right here now if she could. She wouldn't want to. She's in a better place. And there's many of us that are going to see her again. That's why we're not sad. We're sad that she's gone for the present. But there's something permanent, everlasting life. Now we have a reading, um, a Bible reading from Pastor Guthrie Boyd, and it's John chapter 10, the Good Shepherd and His Sheep, if you'd like to come at this time, thank you. Good afternoon everybody to Ivan and his family, the condolences and love from uh, the Assembly of God congregation. And, uh, but at the same time, we understand the, it's a dual thing of sadness, yes. but happiness yes. as we celebrate our sister's glorification, mm. as we celebrate her passing into heaven. And it's like a graduation service here today. And it's an exciting time. And uh, so, uh, but our, we do understand also the, 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 the sadness one feels at that parting. Reading from John chapter 10, just a couple of verses. Uh, John 10, verse 9 and 10, and Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out in and out and find pasture. The thief comes, does not come except to steal and kill and to destroy. And I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. And we think of Shirley's life. I didn't know Shirley terribly well, but I think, think of her life and talking with Ivan, that she was a woman who had abundant life. And I'm talking about abundant life in the spirit. 
It's abundant life in the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue on in John verse 22. It says, now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounding him said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I've said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. As we read these scriptures, we, see, we get a glimpse of the relationship between the Lord and the Father, but we also get a gl glimpse of the Lord Jesus Christ's relationship with us. He is, he is the doorway, he is our shepherd, but he also is a servant. And as our sister shared her life with others as she followed the Lord Jesus Christ, she felt the shepherding arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. She understood what it is and she understands even to a greater degree today what eternal life is about as she's now in her glorified body. Let the comfort of the word of the Lord be with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. We now have um, photographic tribute, and uh, Nancy will uh, play that, and you'll see on the screen. And it's our sisters Shirley and Merle singing, and one is called Jesus Signed My Pardon, and then there's a break, I gather, a small break, then No Disappointment in Heaven. Thank you, Nancy.
Sounds like you're standing right there. You and Sheryl have done that for years. And we've had it many, many, many times. We still like it, my sister. But just remember Merle and Shirley. That's almost like two people stuck together. And they both love the Lord. If you want any more, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll hear more up there. Okay. Thank you, Raywin. You have the eulogy, and we think of you too. Oh, Angel. Jill's, Jill's just gonna, she's a bit gun shy, so she's gonna just support me as I need it. Um, Mum was born on the 14th of December 1931 at Gisborne Cook Hospital. When we think of words that come to mind that describe Mum, it would be humble, kind, caring, selfless, serving, generous, generally all of these with a smile. She enjoyed making others feel happy, valued and included. Her early years were spent growing up on the family farm at Manatuki. She would walk up one and a quarter miles to school. She has two younger sisters, Merle and Dawn, all redheads. Auntie Merle recalls Mum not, not wanting to go to school one day, so she sat in a ditch for several hours until a neighbour spotted her and alerted Nana and Proper to collect her and take her home. They only had a two-bedroom house, so the girls slept in a double bed together for years. With Auntie Dawn in the middle, she was their hot water bottle, they said. Mum had many talents. She was a very fast knitter. Mum also was a beautiful sewer. She won the sewing shield at high school. Later, when her five children were growing up, she would sew and knit matching outfits, often with the machine knitting knitter. The Poverty Bay show was a big event. We were all dressed the same in matching outfits. No mean feat as she went on to have five children in eight years. We were all born in the 1960s. Mum would convince Auntie Dawn to stay up late past midnight when she sewed an outfit. She would make a bed for her beside the fire while she sewed into the night. Mum was also very talented and competitive at sport. Auntie Merle recalls she would give anything a go. As children, the three girls would cut sticks out of willow trees to make hockey, to make hockey sticks to play together. Mum played netball, indoor basketball and hockey. She represented Poverty Bay at all three sporting codes. Mum and Auntie Dawn played together in hockey for Waitui. Mum also played for Kia Toa. Auntie Mel played with Mum in netball and indoor basketball. They were both selected for the North Island rep teams in both sporting codes. Auntie Dawn said Mum would play one sport, then get changed into another uniform and Papa would drive her to the next sport. 
When da Dad came to Gisborne from Albany, Auckland, he went to the Army Hall where competitive indoor basketball was held. He said she was pointed out to him as the tall, red-headed player who was pretty good. Dad loved indoor basketball, but he wasn't any near as good as Mum. He said he used to be reserve or the orange boy. Mum used to make the family laugh as she said she, she was never looking at the bench. She was focused on the court and didn't notice him. <laughs> Dad said he almost had to make an appointment to get a date with her, as sport was her life at that point. The family moved into town behind the old hospital in Valley Road around Mum's later teen years. Papa and Nana owned land with a milking shed next to their home. It's where the Valley Road Cattery is, at the mo is now. Mum worked at Watties to get money for her indoor basketball subs. Mum worked at the Gisborne Cook Hospital as a play pay clerk for many years. And much later, she worked part-time in the kiwi fruit pack houses. She milked cows prior to and after work. Liz Hannah worked for Papa for seven and a half years. He was like a brother to the girls. He slept in the porch area of the house. The girls recall fondly the time Liz got two second-hand bicycles for them and named them Mickey and Minnie. Some evenings after dinner, the three girls would pile into the green truck, which had a flat deck and canopy. Shirley always drove. They would often go to the shop to buy lollies. It would often break down, and rather than phone Papa, they would get the law boys, there were three of them, to the rescue. The green truck was used to go to popular local dances. People would pile on the back to move to an alternative dance venue. Mum would play the piano at these dances held at Manatuki. Mum was known to get a little to get home a little late and would only have a few hours sleep. She would, <laughs> this is, I find this bit funny. She would often need a nudge as, as she would fall asleep milking the cows. <laughs> Mum and Dad were married in the Holy Trinity Church in Gisborne on the 14th of November, 1959. As a wedding gift, Papa and Nana gifted Mum and Dad land in a house in Valley Road just across from Mum's former home. Number 212, Dad later went on to build our two-storey family home on the same site. We camped as a family for six months on site in a caravan and tents as Dad completed the, t the new two-storey home. Mum was a loving homemaker. At certain times of the year, we would return home from school to, to the smell of peaches, pears and the like being stewed and bottled. It was all go in the bright orange kitchen as mum and her two sisters bottled fruit for our growing family. We enjoyed a few family holidays in Auckland visiting our Cowley cousins. We would pile into our, into our Holden station wagon. Mum would pack egg sandwiches, bacon and egg pie, baking, raro juice and a thermos of hot tea. We were packed in around the luggage and bedding. There were no car seats, very few seat belts, but no worries, we didn't need them back then. Mum was very proud of all her children's achievements. Mum ensured we were well fed, warmly dressed, went to school on time with full homemade lunch boxes. Mum made sure we all learned to read, completed homework, and received swimming lessons. Mum taught us all to drive using manual cars. Mum regularly volunteered at lunch times to prepare and serve warm cocoa. Mum was there getting us ready for Mangapapa school events like pet days, dress up days, galas, school camps, and the like. Mum was on the side line of nearly every game we, that we each played, either hockey, rugby or athletics. We were expected to be respectful, helpful, 
grateful and polite. There was a stern no-nonsense side to Mum. Look out if Mrs Cowley had to come in to see your class teacher, either Mrs Dodds, Mrs Wycarry or Mr Beats, to bring us back in line. Mum ensured we learned early on the value of responsibility and good work ethic by getting us into paper runs and for the boys, milk runs. Barry and John recall the many times Dad, a Mum drove them to Pihiri and Natapa area to set and check their possum traps, selling fur for, their, for pocket money. Mum would happily wait in the car reading while the boys and their friends checked their traps. Mum supported Dad's building business, Cowley and Chalmers and I.E. Cowley, by doing the book work. Mum was very thrifty with, with money. She was a big support for Dad as going out on his own in the building trade. As the family grew, Mum took a great interest in the lives of all her grandchildren and was an amazing support as we parented our children. Abby, my daughter, shared that she remembers her nana driving her and Judah around town chasing a rainbow, then nana's car got stuck in the mud. Nana had a little jar, orange jar full of gold coins ready for us grand grandkids to go and buy lollies at the nearby dairy. Some of uh, mum's favourite lollies were red hearts, spearmint leaves, milk bottles, chocolate fish, pineapple lumps, some of which are available at afternoon tea. Mum loved chocolate chip ice cream, porridge, KFC, sausage rolls, egg sandwiches and Auntie Mel's pikelets and pavlovas. Mum would often have her porridge very early in the day, read her Bible, have her quiet time, then go back to bed all before Dad got up. Mum had two namesakes, her youngest daughter, Vanessa Shirley, and her youngest grandchild, Sabrina Lorison. Mum was very close to Sabrina, Barry and Francis's daughter. Nana often helped her with her reading, drawing, playing Jenga and doing word finds together. After lockdown last July, Mum taught Sabrina to knit. Together with input from myself, we completed a piggy square blanket. This was another opportunity to encourage, support and teach her family. Mum was involved with, at times, mosaics, especially the project celebrating the 100 years at Mangapapa Church, the mural. Um, Mum had very few requests for her funeral service. She requested those two songs be played. She also had chosen, has chosen the two hymns. She really loved the old hymns. The final song we're going to sing, I have chosen, because the words truly sum up Mum's Christian faith. The song is a modern version on the hymn, Glory to His Name. There to, to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. The final song words say, Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. You took my place, made Inside my tomb of sin, you were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end, for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Mum's favourite Bible readings were John 14, 1 to 3, in my father's house and many mansions, Psalm 91, and John 10, the good shepherd that has been read. Mum joined the Christian Gisborne Christian Fellowship in 1970. She has been a faithful Christian for 51 years. Mum and Auntie Merle unknowingly both prayed for the gift of singing. They had, have been singing for 48 years. For the past 19 years, Mum and Auntie Merle have sung together at many different organisations and recently, for the past six and a half years, they would sing monthly at local rest homes, and mum would play her guitar 
or ukulele. Mum tithed faithfully and supported many Christian ministries. She believed in helping others in need. She supported the local prison ministry. She often would travel to Hawke's Bay in Taupo with Auntie Merle, ministering to the inmates alongside a small team of brethren. Mum believed in church, church attendance was important. She attended this church on Sundays and Tuesday night prayer meetings many times through the years. Mum made close, many close, close connections with many of her church family through the years in New Zealand, here, and in Canada. She found support in those earlier years from the prayer and fellowship of Brother Jim and Jean Hill. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mum's local fellowship. Um, Mum loved coming here to church, and we know you dearly loved her. Thank you for your prayers and support you gave Mum as she faced the many challenges of her own health and the challenges of raising a family. Mum was a devoted Christian. She is the glue that held our family together. We are all going to miss her dearly. May she be re enjoying her reward. And finally, Jill and I have been part of helping Mum in the particularly last few weeks of her illness and we just want to finally reinforce and on behalf of the family a special thanks to the Ryman Hospital staff and hospice team over these past four months. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Raywin and Jill. May the Lord bless us hearing that. Would you all like to stand? We'll uh, sing a hymn here, one I particularly like, The Eastern Gate. Great to be a part of it. I will meet you in the morning just inside the Eastern Gate. Then be ready, faithful pilgrim, lest with you it be too late. We've got to make a decision down here to be at that Eastern Gate up there. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Howard. It's a lovely hymn. We sing it often.
a time, all the people that you've loved and have loved the Lord meeting again for eternity. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Howard. Praise be to God. It's good to be here and to remember the life of Shirley Kelly. Um, she was a real good friend of mine, known her for over 50 years, and uh, she's been a regular attender of this church. And it's been a great blessing, her and her sister, Merle, and they sang together. It's just beautiful. We've got some lovely recordings. Some of one Dean does done on that recording was really good. And, but we have many recordings of those songs that they used to sing together. Such an encouragement. So I'm not going to take very long. Uh, we're not make it too long for you. But I just want to thank each of you for coming to remember the life of Shirley Kelly. And uh, she was more than a church member. I want to say this. She was more than a church member. To me, she was a true Christian sister in Christ. There was no put-ons. It was genuine. Who believes that? Say amen. amen. If you knew her, she was a genuine soul. And uh, it was a great blessing to have her in our midst. And uh, I used to feel she was a true friend, uh, which I could easily fellowship with, especially in the things pertaining to God. And uh, we're going to be very sad for a while, having her not here. And uh, I'm sure that... We all have mixed feelings today, as uh, Brother Lee just said. One is, she'll be sadly missed by us all, especially every family member that's here. You can't replace people, as we know, and I just feel that many will be feeling sad in their hearts. But number two is, mixed feelings, because she has been set free and joined her Lord and loved ones in glory. If she had had an option to come back to this church right now, she would not want to do it. No way. She is in the presence of Almighty God because she was a believer in Him. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful to know the Lord? He's just so wonderful to us. And it's a reality, and it's getting closer. It's getting closer every day. We all feel the pain, but... I just want to say that the, when the parting of a loved one takes place it's, and they are a believer in Christ, it's much easier to bear. And uh, I just want to read the scripture found in 1 Corinthians 54. You can read it on the screen. It just says, So when this corruptible, talking about our bodies, this corruptible, shall put on incorruption, that's when we're taken up to be with the Lord, and this mortal shall I put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So only in God's word can bring real comfort to us today. Jesus, one day, he comforted a family. There was a brother, a brother Lazarus. He had just died. But I want you to listen to the words that he said concerning Lazarus to the, his sister Martha. In John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And what whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. They are the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Believest thou this, he said. So what a tremendous consolation to the believer in Christ Jesus. He said the believer in him can never die. Oh, we might go to sleep. We may go to sleep and lay down our bodies, which one day, if time goes on, we we'll all have to. You see, brother and sister, people, one day, if time goes on, we're all going to come to this box. 
That is for sure. But it's not the box. It's to know that you've been redeemed and that you believe that when Jesus Christ died over 2,000 years ago, he took all the sins of the human world. And all you have to believe is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's all you really have to do. Now, Sister Shirley, she gave her life to the Lord many years ago. Many years ago, she gave her life to Christ and accepted him as her personal saviour. By repenting of his sin and asking God to forgive her, I just want to say that it's paying off today. It's paying off today. Praise be to God. And I just loved her testimony. It was pure. It was real. She believed God. And uh, I believe that she is with the Lord now because she gave her life to him. So that blessing is not just for her, but it's for every person here. All you people here can receive Jesus Christ. You, it's, you must. Jesus said you must be born again. You must be a new creature in Christ. So Sister Shirley, she was not perfect. None of us are perfect. We know that. But the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says that in Romans 3.23. And the wages of sin, there is a price to pay for sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And she is paid, it's paid off for surely because she's come to the end of her life and the Lord has taken her up and placed her in the kingdom of God because she is a believer. And I believe that's tremendous. That's the gospel. That's what the world's missing. That's what the world needs to hear about is the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is not a sad time knowing she is... She, she, she is only asleep in Christ. She is in the presence of her Lord. Let us be comforted, each one, by the word of God. I want to read this to you, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, which says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep in the grave, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if you believe it, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. And I just want to say that the coming of the Lord, according to Bible prophecy, is closer than you and I think. We are at the end time. Shall remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are, when they died and are buried, like Sister Shirley, but a believer, when they, when they are placed into the ground, they shall rise first when Jesus comes. Then we which are alive and remain, believers that are on earth, shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Isn't that tremendous? That's wonderful. It's everything to me. We don't come to church to be a church member. We come to church to get closer to God and to find out his saving grace in our lives. Therefore, wherefore comfort one another with these words, and that's what we are doing right now. To be comforted. I believe on the authority of God's word that Sister Shirley shall rise again. Like she, he said about uh, Lazarus to Martha, he shall rise again. And anyone that's a believer in Christ Jesus, that he died for your sins and you accept it, you will rise again. That is wonderful. That is everything to me. Praise be to God. So I just pray that we'll be blessed, encouraged today and uh, to know that when Jesus Christ returns, the dead in Christ will rise first and the living believers that are left on here on earth will be chained and rise to meet our Lord in the air. That's what God said. 
not me. The believer will rise to meet the Lord in the air. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's simple. Why don't people take it up? Don't leave it. She didn't leave it. She did what she wanted to do. She received the Lord Jesus Christ, been a, a believer for over 50 years. Now she's gone to meet her Lord. Never to part. Meet her loved ones that are over there as well. In closing, this parting from Sister Shirley is only a temporal. It's a temporal experience. And I pray that each of us will be a part of that soon coming reunion. This is not fairy tales, brother and sister, people. This is not a fairy tale. This is thus saith God's word. It cannot fail. He said, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So may the Lord bless each and every one of us today. And we just want to thank you once again for all coming to be at this time with a memorial of Sister Shirley Cowley. And uh, we're just going to pray now. Lord Jesus, we come to thee in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope of the gospel. Lord, it's real. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to hearts here. Maybe somebody's never thought of these things. Maybe they've never heard of these things. But they want to have the assurance that if they should pass off the scene, and all of us will one day, if the time tarries, if you don't come, Lord, we'll all have to come this route. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless each person here. Give us courage. Give us strength. Comfort this brokenhearted. Comfort those, Lord, that don't know you. And Lord, maybe they're a bit sad today. We are all sad to a point because we're going to miss Sister Shirley. But Lord, I pray that our souls will be ready to meet our Savior when that hour should come. We commit this word into your hands in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Brother Lee, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Just a few things here. After the internment at the cemetery, the rear hall, which is this one over the back here, right here in the property, uh, we will have afternoon tea and fellowship and a meet and greet. And uh, if it was raining, you know, I mean, if it's not raining, through the double doors, they'll be open and you can walk straight in there. Now, those that would rather not go to the uh, cemetery, feel free to stay here and there'll be music played over there and meet and greet people in there and as the burial is finished, we'll come back, those that watch to, and have a supper. I mean, afternoon tea. Now, we're going to um, have a, um, a, a song here. It's um, called Thank You, Jesus, for the Blood. It's going to be paid on, um, Nancy will play it. Uh, it's sung by Charity Gale. I think it's on the screen, I, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a final song. But if you would just sit quietly while this is playing, and then um, Shirley will leave us as Charity Gale's song draws to the end. They'll just come in there. And then at that stage, when it's moving down the aisle, you may stand and do what you wish. So thank you, uh, Nancy. And this will be, as I said, Charity Gale singing Jesus for the blood. <laughs>
made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time. the blood.